<laughs> at least he's not dead yet well outside of game uh folks welcome aboard it's a special edition not really because we're doing this every sunday uh the margu campaign is about to go live so welcome aboard thanks for joining us we really appreciate it uh today we are going to maybe maybe not find the answers that we have all been seeking uh with this campaign uh as you may know they are split up but before we do that Let's get to the introductions. We'll start with uh, Frank Sr. Who are you and who are you playing? I am Frank the Sr. playing Leaf the Druid. And Frank Jr. I am Frank the Jr. playing Robert of Zeppelin. Uh, Frank the Third is playing Manfang, and he is laying down because in-game he's most likely dead after falling into the river while as the historians will write, attempted to valiantly save Weave. <laughs> uh, Jason, who are you? Who are you playing? I'm Jason playing Copious Volbitters the Third, the gnome. Nicholas? I guess Crapstain, the rogue. And AJ? Felix the Rogue reporting for duty. Are you going to go 100% again like you did last week? Yes, I am. <laughs> the most accurate archer in all of Cragwitch. Uh, well, Lumberton right now. <laughs> Folks, these guys uh, have picking up the torch to try and figure out why towns and villages have been disappearing in the area of Snowf. They have been to all three of their assigned areas, have found very few survivors, and despite their best efforts, there have been a few survivors. Uh, they have found some tunnels outside of Lumberton, the now burnt to a crisp lumber camp. Uh, they have taken one of their more antagonistic civilian observers with them. Uh, unfortunately, I believe it was Robert of Zeppelin who gave him a helping hand over an underground river, smashing him into a rock face and weave uh, tumbled into the waters below. Uh, fortunately, <laughs> the rest of the party made it over until the last man, Man Fang, botched his jump and Valiantly dove in to save Weave is the official party line. Uh, during this mess, Haggis Crapstain has ventured forth on his own after being told to do so by his party who wanted to see him dead, is how I read it. Uh, and he <laughs> is split up from the party. As we last left, Manfang was in the water, gone. A skull... Uh, came bouncing out of a chamber beyond a dark portal, and we rejoin Leaf, Robert, Copius, and Felix as they inch towards the dark, darkened archway where the skull came from, which may or may not have been Haggis's. Uh, gentlemen, what would you like to do? I want to head up to, toward the portal that the skull came from. Fair. Carefully. Uh, who cannot see in the dark? So Felix he probably has to go first. <laughs> Felix is going to need to light a torch, which I assume you have in your. I can help you with that, Felix, if you want. Just I do have torches. Top of your head. Just put it right here on his on the bridge of his nose. That's okay. I'd rather be carrying it in my offhand. <laughs> Hey, before he lights that torch, can I try to use stealth to move up through in the shadows uh, as quickly as possible? Sure, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Dirty 20 plus. Uh, you whiz by, leaf the druid, enter the dark portal, and come into a large chamber with a domed top. In the center, there is a fractured crypt made out of stone, and there are... I believe eight statues of warriors present, all looking upon this uh, center area in reverence. Give me a perception check, Copius. Uh, Seventeen. There's also a set of stairs leading up and around, uh, off into parts unknown. Uh, as you get the lay of the land here, Leaf, Robert, Felix. You also enter and see most of the same things. Give me perception rolls to see if you notice the stair stairway to heaven as well. One, 25. One does, one don't. 20, 30. 
Uh, everybody but Felix, uh, holding the torch too close and trying to burn his eyebrows off, notices that there is also a stairwell. And the centerpiece of this room is the stone crypt with the fractured uh, headstone or slab. Uh, what would you guys like to do? I want to go up and look into the crypt. Okay. Thank Felix you. and Copius? All of you. Uh, as you creep forward, you notice in the settled dust on the ground are footprints similar to the size and shape of one Haggis Crapstain, who has apparently been here before. Peering into the crypt, uh, you notice that the headless set of bones uh, is contained within the stone box. Well, I guess we know where the skull came from. Did crap stain attack us with the skull? Uh, that, uh, yeah, I could read that. That's how I'm seeing this. If if there's nothing more to see in the the uh, vault, I'm going to follow the footprints. Uh, let the viewers note that uh, man, man, fang screwed. They don't even care about him. There's <laughs> <laughs> not, not the least bit of care in there. Uh, as you head towards the stairwell, <clears throat> one Haggis Crabstain appears, uh, walking back down. Haggis, what'd you see? Nothing. Well, where does it go? It, you know, it kind of just ends, you know? I had to take a crap. If you, it, that's up there. Like, you can look if you want, but I'm being honest with you on this one. There's nothing up there. <coughs> Try to discern Show truth, because he sure seems like he's lying through his teeth yeah, already. That's the same thing I think. I'm going to head up the stairs to take a look for myself. Uh, if you want to see if he's lying, give me an insight check, and Leaf the Druids headed up the stairs. 21. 19. I heard 19, 21. 20. 20. Felix? 20, 21. He's lying through his teeth. Does but nice. he he doesn't appear to be lying, but he's lying. I'll go on, I'll go up the stairs. <clears throat> Leaves leave. first, Copius, Felix, uh, Robert, Haggis, uh, you're back to yourself. Uh, as everybody creeps towards the stairway, uh, anything you want to say, Haggis? Um, no. Okay. Uh, leave uh, <laughs> ahead as you curl around the stone staircase. Uh, you notice a flickering light, uh, maybe a torch, maybe a brazier. You aren't sure. And you also see a shadow moving about around. Uh -oh. It appears to be a chamber up above. I will forewarn the people behind me and keep moving forward. Uh, fair enough. As you reach the top step of this narrow stairwell, uh, you have found a chamber. It appears to be some kind of living quarters. And there is a little old elven woman uh, at the other end of the room uh, sitting on a stool eating a salad. Might be a cob salad. You aren't really sure. <laughs> I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> oh, that. What? That oh, the comments I can make with that salad. Yeah, I'm going to address the elvish female. Just ask her, who, "Who are you? And what are you doing here?" Ah, uh, I hope that's better. Ah, uh, oh. Hello, dearie. Uh, I did not realize I had visitors. How are you? I am Tara. I am fine. I am Leaf. Uh, you notice that she is a elven woman, but you aren't quite sure. <sighs> are we all in the room, or it's just... Uh... Leafy. Uh, I would assume Leaf uh, entered in enough to allow yes. you all to come in, uh, and she will greet each of you warmly as she chews on her cob salad uh, with a little bit of raisin hanging out of her lip onto her chin hairs. I do not have good experiences with old women. In the, I just, 
Copious has problems with matriarchal society. So I mean, my key, Copious. Yeah, exactly. It's like an old episode of Twilight Zone here. I'm having flashbacks. Yeah. I smell. Well, I better shut up. Uh, she apologizes and says, I'm sorry, I haven't offered you any food. Can I interest you in a salad? No, thank you. I'm good. Uh... Not a problem, dearie. She notices Haggis Crapstain and says, hello, young man. How are you? Good, I guess. I don't know you. Oh, we've never met. I just noticed that you appeared. Well, that's funny. He just came from up here. Could I have you a salad? Met him? Uh, I did not see him. I was here eating a salad. Why, of course, uh, young man, I can go ahead and fix you a salad. Uh, she quickly pulls the contents out of a strange box uh, and begins to feebly walk over towards you using a cane with a handle carved in the shape of a duck's head uh, for support. Uh, she's not the fastest creature on the planet, uh, and her hand kinds of shakes like a palsy. Uh, but she does uh, look at Leaf. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. He wants a salad and uh, attempts to cut through the group. I'm going to back away from There her. is no cut. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Why is I, it that we're all afraid of a little old elvish woman? I, I, you don't even come in the room. I don't want to hear anything. Or is the doppelganger check? Uh, what have they done with Haggis Crap thing? <laughs> Excuse me. Our Albert about killed me in one round. Okay. Imagine this old woman. Everything scares me. Haggis, uh, she hands you the plate. Here you go, dearie. Uh, and it has the largest raisins and olives you have ever seen. She turns around and feebly goes over. And uh, everybody give me a perception check. 18. 22. 16. I think everybody notices that uh, she has had a slight accident. As she walks away from you. Seems to be a little bit damp in the back. Does it look like olives and raisins in the bowl? It looks like she's a little bit liquidy incontinent. Mm. No, I'm asking, does it really look like olives oh. and raisins in the bowl? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks, looks great. Okay. I'm going to ask Cagus if he's going to eat those. Shrunken heads and eyeballs. Yeah, I'll eat the whole thing. I have Newt. Uh, give me a con check just to see how you like it. How's your dirty work salad? 14. That's good. It'll work. Very nutritious, very filling. <clears throat> she sets uh, her plate down, exhales deeply. <sighs> I don't get a lot of exercise. I should probably work out more, but you can't be very spry when you're 800 years old. What brings you to my home? Can, has she told us her name yet? I just want to ask her if uh, what interesting. She told Leaf. Uh, her name is Tara Displasia. <laughs> <laughs> you ask her what does she do while she's down here in this cave? Does she ever get out much? Oh, I get out, but I, <laughs> I, I use my spells to do that. I I, I like to go out and harvest uh, my delicacies above. I have a small little farm over on the hillside just past Lumberton. Just out of curiosity, how does she use her spells to harvest? What's, what, she, what spells is she casting? Oh, I teleport out, my dear. Or I dimension door. Who's afraid of a little old lady now? <laughs> when was the last time you were out at your farm? Oh, I haven't gone out in a week. No. Ten days. It has been a long time. I have not seen the light of sun in ten days. How good are you at finding things that are lost? I do have some seer powers. Um, we had a, one of our companions fell in the river trying to save oh, another no. one. and that is went horrible. down. You think maybe you could find them? You know what? I have an idea. She kind of hobbles over on her duck cane, uh, grabs it by the base, and uses the duck bill to open up a shelf high and then reach in, kind of shepherd's hook it out, and catches a crystal ball in her hand. Slides it back down in her hand, 
kind of humps back over to where she was, sets it down. She starts to move her hands a little bit. She goes, silly me. Who am I looking for? It's the Dragonborn. His name is Man Fang. Man, man, man Fang. Man Fang. It's a family name. <sighs> okay. How does that spell go? You know, in my younger days, I I would have gotten it. Man Fang. Okay. She starts to handle this crystal ball, but you guys see nothing. There's no smoke, no swirling, no color differentiation. <clears throat> uh, Haggis, you belch loudly the salad you know, effects. And she goes, oh dear. He and that scraggly old man seem to be bashing themselves in the head with rocks as they go down the river. This is not good. You need to go save him. Any idea how to get there? Uh, I th the easiest way would be to go down into the river. Any other way to go get there? <laughs> how about opening a dimensional door, Phil? Oh, I, I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm strong enough to carry them both. I don't even think I'm strong enough to carry one of them. Well, how about opening a door where they're at? We could drag them out. Well, the problem is they're moving down a river at a very rapid rate. If I make oh. a mistake, I could flood my room. Well, yeah, it'll dry. Is there an opening down the river <clears throat> where we could open a door, run out and grab them and bring them back? Well, the river does run south uh, towards the bigger towns. Uh, if you came through uh, the smaller towns, uh, I'm, I'm sure you crossed over the river once or twice. I mean, did you come from the area of Belfast, Soto, or Morass? Yes. Well, then you certainly crossed the <coughs> you certainly crossed the river at that time. Uh, I would imagine if they survive, you can go ahead and pluck them out of the river at that location. Uh, good to know. Good to know. But <laughs> oh dear, the one's life force is not doing so well. Oh, and I just lost them. Uh, they went, stuff happens. Well, there's a significant amount of mineral deposits within the underground caverns, and I have not been able to maintain my concentration like I used to. But yeah. you should you should go rescue them. I think we'll look towards that. But before we go, you know, not to change the subject at all, but, you know, the villages up of Lumberton especially has been rather... They are the nicest people. But there's something attacking their village. What would attack Lumberton? They are a peaceful community, unless it's bears, because bears will kill you. <laughs> well, something's attacking the actual houses themselves. They're sinking into the ground, literally falling into the ground and killing the people. I don't that think is... a bear could do that part, though. When did this happen? I was just up there 10 days ago. I think about 10 days ago it happened. <laughs> huh. Well, that is unusual. It must have happened after I left. Anything in your crystal ball there that has an idea of what might have caused? Well, that would be too far in the past for me to go ahead and scry. Well, it looks like something's just happened recently within a few days. As I've said, I have not been above ground in 10 days. I was just curious if you might be able to help us and know of anything that could do such a thing. Yuri, I would love to help you. Uh, you know what? <clears throat> <clears throat> I think I have a magic portal that can get you out of here. Would that help you? Haggis is willing to test that portal. <laughs> Doppelganger. <laughs> Which one of you is Haggis? Oh, young man, how did you enjoy the salad? Oh, it was good. It was fantastic. I appreciate that. Um, would you like to go ahead and attempt to rescue your fellow associates? 
Sure, why not? She gets up, kind of uses her cane, walks over to another cabinet, and pulls out a folded piece of parchment. She begins to slowly unwrap it and asks, uh, Young man, Felix, uh, could you hold this one end for me? Certainly. As the parchment begins to unwrap, it's more of a bed sheet kind of thing. Uh, and as you wrap it, it looks like there is a brick archway and darkness in it. She uses her cane to walk over towards the wall behind you guys where there are two pegs. You'll see grommets, brass grommets, in this bed sheet. And she asks you, go ahead and hang it on that hook for me, please. Okay. She uses the duck bill on the grommet. Could I ask a favor? Do you need a hand? Yes. Leaf the Druid, could you please assist me with hanging this up there? My shoulder is giving me a problem today. Right, certainly. She hands you the corner, takes the duck bill out, kind of waddles on back a little bit. You want to go ahead and hang it on the hook for me? Sure. Okay. Uh, who's looking at this portal? Oh, jeez. I'm not. <laughs> you handed it to me. Of course I'm looking at it. Okay. So <laughs> Leaf and Felix are Hoggis, Copius, and Robert. What are you doing? I feel watching the little old lady that's <laughs> You're you you you've got issues. <laughs> she's given a salad. She's helped you out. She's cried and told you you guys suck because you let your friend die. The last little old lady I dealt with sick bees on me. Copius has issues. <laughs> so Copius is keeping an eye on her. Haggis and Robert, what are you doing? Watching the old woman. Okay. She's all trying to kill me. Yeah, I'll look at the portal. Okay. So Leaf. Felix and Haggis are looking at the portal. Copius and Robert, you notice she thinks for a moment and then she takes her cane and taps it three times. On the third time, the duck head goes quack. Felix, Leaf, and Haggis, behind you, you hear a quack and you see little points of light in the archway. Okay, dearie, step forward. <laughs> I still have my salad bowl, right? Yep. I, I just it, it's empty, but you still have it. I don't know. I, I'll just lightly toss it at the portal just to see. Uh, it disappears. And she goes, <coughs> Deary, step forward. Leaf, Felix, Haggis, perception check. Let, let's see Big if you money. guys can Big tell money. that it's it's a portal oh, to hell. Ooh. Twenty-five. Felix. Twenty-three. Haggis. Twenty-one. Something is coming out of the portal. Oh, wow! <laughs> If I'm still standing near the portal, I'm going to take a step back. Me okay. too. A couple of steps, actually. I'm just... You're going to bump into Copius and Robert. I don't uh, care. Who, who, yeah, who don't have care not either. moved because they're afraid of a little old lady. Uh, Robert and Copius, are you still just paying attention to the little old woman? While not feeling up my uh, longsword. Well, if... Knucklehead just walked over top of the three foot tall gnome. I probably yeah. stopped watching the little old lady. I think you got tea bagged. Uh, <laughs> Robert and Copius, you see the little old lady do this. <laughs> <laughs> Felix oh, Leaf, and yeah. Haggis, how about we roll initiative? <laughs> oh, damn. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Harmless. <laughs> 22. <laughs> 10. 9. 6. I've seen this episode. We're dead. 
God. Uh, Robert and Copius, why don't you go ahead and roll initiative as well for me, please? You don't see anything. 19. <laughs> I got nine. Nine, also. nine, <laughs> nine. Uh, I, my roll's a 22. <laughs> uh, as a rock creature, uh, Grignac comes out of the archway. It is going to focus on five Felix, four Haggis, and with its meaty stone fists, it's going to go ahead and smash adventurers. Uh, Haggis, 12 plus 9 is 21. Felix, 14 plus 9 is 23. I will assume both of those hit. This is going to hurt. <laughs> oh, boy. At least Man Fang died a man's death. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. Uh, oh, that's not bad at all. Uh, 13 to both of you. Uh, Copius and Robert. Actually, let's go with... Yeah, Copius and Robert. Uh, you guys are two and three. You hear a noise behind you of... Uh, almost teeth getting shattered uh felix you tied with copious so you are also up this round but what robert won with a 19 robert what you gonna do when they come for you uh robert i told you i'm ha manhandling my sword i'm i'm hacking that ahead first go ahead and attack terra terra displacia displacia 19 Oh, Natural. easily, e easily, easily hits her. That scares me. I, I, I you know what? I, I hope you feel good about yourself. <laughs> and thirteen points of damage. Whew, that's gonna hurt. Uh Felix will go with you first since you took one to the molar. What do you want to do? Uh, I guess I'm holding a torch in my off hand, and I assume that this room is still dark otherwise. No, uh, there. She has a brazier in here that offers some illumination. You will not okay. be totally blind. Well, I'm going to drop the torch, just right at my feet. Whatever is below me mm -hmm. might catch on fire. I will take out both short swords and start attacking this rock creature in front of me. That's just rig back. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. I got a 19 and a 15. Uh, one hits, one misses. Uh, ooh, nine damage. Okay. Copious. <laughs> uh, oh, no. you, you see Robert uh, go an ape. What do you want to do? Uh, Copious was on the edge already, so he's going to have a serious case of premature evocation. <laughs> and he's going to cast a spell right at between the eyes of this witch. I'm just gotcha. telling you right now. That's fair enough. Alleged witch, though. Alleged witch. He's going to miss, but not miss by a fumble. Okay. Well, uh, let me let me ask. Eleven. Just barely missed her. Okay. Just barely. Uh, I, that no. brings us to the nine leaf. Uh, leaf, you've seen your associates uh, take the old one-two from Mike Tyson. What do you want to do? Muted. Talk with a muted mic. Is that what he wants to do? Yes. He, he's casting a spell in direct silence. <laughs> yeah, I, where I was going to go ahead and throw that lightning bolt, but I realized that's the wrong character. Uh, I'm going to evoke flame blade. Okay. And swing at the rock creature. What is this, Game of Thrones? He thinks the rock creature Could is be. the mountain. Hey, whatever. But it's got enough hit points to be the mountain. Yeah, yeah no retreat, be. no surrender. Mm -mm. Get in there. Um, I, I was looking. I was trying to see what it goes against. I don't know. Flame blade's just an attack. Okay. And it does extra damage, mm -hmm. I believe. Oh yes, it does. Thirteen. And and. Felix, what was your miss roll, by the way? Eleven. No, Felix. Oh, Felix. 
It was a 12 plus three. Okay, yeah, that does miss. 19. Yes, Leaf, that hits. Um, 5, 10, 13 points. Nice. Yeah. That's how you hit somebody. <laughs> and last but not least, I guess leaving a crap stain in his pants after getting punched out by <laughs> your metal. metal. <laughs> You're up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So um, the doorway out of here is blocked by a sheet, right? Yes, Chief. Correct. Is it like a, a, a normal bed sheet? It appears so. But normal bed sheets don't usually uh, push out rock elementals. Okay. I'll, t I'll, t I'll hit the woman, I guess. Wow. Must must be a DNA thing. <laughs> hey, head of the snake, baby. Head of the snake. Now, now keep in mind, August, you are going to turn your back on the elemental. That's okay. Kill the woman. You'll only take a couple more hits. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> Maybe you should try to kick it back through the portal. <laughs> Yeah, halfling, kick that giant creature back to the portal. Instead, I, I want to, I want to rip the portal. I want to take my dagger and cut a hole in it. The, the, the um, bed sheet. Okay, go ahead and hit it. Okay, it's ten, fourteen. Oh yeah, you do it. And as you cut across, uh, give you a perception check. Sixteen. You see three more rock creatures headed your way, but as you slice through the magical portal, they fall back into the dark void. Uh, top of the order. Haggis do good. Let's see if I can hit Haggis again. <laughs> uh, let's see. Two attacks. Four. Haggis. One. Three. Leaf. And uh, odd even. Two, Copious. So Leaf and Haggis are going to get punched out. Copious is going to be uh, victimized by the alleged witch. Uh, so Leaf, nine plus nine is 18. Is that it? And Haggis, three plus nine, 12. Does a 12 hit? Uh, so I get Leaf, and I am going to use... Uh, Copious, give me a saving throw against intelligence, please. Uh, 13. Uh, that fails. Leaf takes 16 hit points of damage as, oh. as Hulk smash. Copious, go ahead and roll me a d10, please. Oh, I don't like the start of that. Five. Uh, you are confused and you will not be allowed to take any action this turn. Uh, moving up, 19, Robert of Zeppelin. Uh, Leaf the Druid has one of those slow motion fist blood spurting out uh, of his face. <laughs> but, you, but, but you are picking on a little old lady. Uh, I'm going to sever the head, then burn this bitch down. <laughs> 17? Yep, hits. It's a little old lady. Nine points. Yeah, she's still there. Uh, copious. Oh, too soon. Felix. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I assume that that torch at my feet didn't catch anything on fire. It did not. Uh, okay, then I'm going to keep attacking the rock creature in front of me okay. with swords. Yeah, it's a stone floor. Uh, it, had you kicked it forward, you could have burned the portal before Haggis did. Uh, 21 and uh, 14. One hit, one miss. And the one that hits does six damage. Yeah, that's, that's better. 
I guess. Ah, uh, ba 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 ba. Leaf the Druid, uh, after picking up an incisor and maybe a front tooth, it's your turn. 25. 25. <laughs> <laughs> you got to say it with a speech impediment that that thing's giving you. 25. Uh, 25. You're going to sound like Mike Tyson. <laughs> Thacko. <laughs> 13. 13. 13. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're, you're chopping it down. I guess crap stain. You have successfully saved them from the onslaught of elementals charging through. What would you like to do next? How big is the rock creature? Like, uh, it's large. Okay. And the stairway out is, um, it's open, right? Uh, you can see it through the tattered, uh, portal. Gonna run and bail. <laughs> Cut and run. <laughs> so I'm gonna walk out so I don't fall down the stairs from running. So you know, I'm gonna run to the stairway and then walk down so I don't fall down. Now you know this thing's in between you and the stairs, right? It's gonna get a attack of opportunity if you try and just saunter on down. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's good to know. I'm gonna attack the rock creature. Okay. I mean, I don't mind crushing you into the side of the tunnel. That I'm good. I'm I'm good. You know, so if he's running for the stairs, I think uh, Felix and I should get an attack of opportunity. On <laughs> uh, Fifteen is not good enough. Top of the order. Uh, D six. First attack. Two. Leaf. And six. Felix. Odd even on Robert and Copius. This time it's going to be odd. It's going to go after Robert. So, uh, the rock creature. Miss. Uh, two plus nine is not going to do it. Felix, uh, four plus nine does a 13 get you. Uh, that's going to stink. Uh, the little old peaceful lady has already used that spell. <laughs> already used that spell. Ooh, I like that. I'll go with that. Uh, 14 plus 9. 23. Uh, as a ray of frost comes shooting out and hits Robert of Zeppelin right in the face. Uh, 2d8. That old bat has some heat. Uh, 10 damage to Robert of Zeppelin. Uh, that brings us to Robert of Zeppelin. Are you going to cut her head off one digit at a time <laughs> working on it uh that would be 23 easily picking on an old lady heroes damage. so that would be 13 points of damage mm, very nice she's gonna be pissed now uh Copious, after realizing you are not a vice presidential candidate, who are you? Why are you here? You may attack. Felix, you may also attack this round. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call out to her as I, before I l l let my spell, spell go, if I can, and just tell her to call off her uh, elemental and see if she'll respond at all. Sure. <clears throat> so I'm going to call out, and I'm, I've got the spell prep to go off, but if she doesn't right. pause, respond, communicate, then I'm going to blast her with my boomstick. Uh, D12 against me. That's a 12. <laughs> well, so much for that. Boomstick it is. I believe her answer is this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you are fumble. number one. <laughs> I believe she told you to go duck yourself. <laughs> I missed. Okay. Uh, AC 12 on her. I still missed. Ah, you showed her. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Uh, Felix. Yeah, I'm going to attack this creature still. Uh, and one of my rolls was a two. <laughs> okay. Does that, the other one was uh, 23, so it hit for nine damage. Okay. And the, what happens with the two? Uh, you almost notch your sword. It's not a crit fail. Uh, there are no specialty crits in this one, in this area. I should say. Uh, that brings us to Leaf, uh, the Toothless. <laughs> Go ahead, him, Leaf. <laughs> <laughs> Leaf, 
we have a character in another campaign who has a speech impediment and he hates it when people uh, make fun of it and he does it very well but in uh, one adventure he took a hit to the head and suddenly found that he had the ability to enunciate correctly for about an hour <laughs> go ahead leaf <laughs> you're muted i'm sorry 19 that hits and 17 points oh. well, you're starting to chop that thing down haggis Ron Agus, save yourself. <laughs> Does the you better not <laughs> run away, run away. <laughs> you can make up any story you want. <laughs> Survivors write history. <laughs> uh, does the uh, I'm gonna attack the rock creature. I also want to talk to the lady and tell her to call off the creature. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and hit the rock creature. And 17. <laughs> uh, 17 does hit him. Yo, bat, call off your brick. <laughs> I, I can respond as the little old lady Tara. <laughs> that is pretty much 11. Deep. 11 damage. 11. Ooh. I figured that's how she threw her frost spell. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that brings us to the top of the order. Rock creature is going to smash Druid, smash Hoggis, odd even, uh, odd Robert of Zeppelin. Uh, rock creature, Leaf, uh, 21 total, uh, only 14 to Hoggis. Uh, I'm assuming the 21 gets you. Uh, oh, you, you got so lucky. Uh, two ones, total damage seven. Oh, great. Let's, uh, let's make you frosty, Robert. 19 plus uh, nine, uh, 2d8. She's going to freeze you to death with another 10 hit points of damage. Uh, your turn for payback, Mel Gibson. Hey, now do we get to make fun of him being muted like he does to his dad? <laughs> yes. Muted. Absolutely. I was saying a special phrase is under my breath. Gotcha. Uh, I'm going to retreat back. Uh, and bump into Leaf and Felix? As long as they get the hell out of my way, I got to do a little healing on myself. Uh, Robert, DC 12 Dex. Uh, Leaf, DC 12 Dex. I uh, rolled 11. Nope. You 12. stumble. So you will have to heal yourself next round. Oh. Uh, you pass. Uh, you shoulder or butt check uh, Robert of Zeppelin as he tries to run you over. You have no issues. Copious, uh, you find yourself alone versus the Enchantress of the Earth and Felix uh, still squaring off with uh, Grignac. You guys are up. All right. I'm, I'm blasting a spell at her. Will Will this be in addition to uh, Robert cutting off her head? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's gonna be it's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be the best spell you ever saw. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Oh, Robert. hey, I, twenty. I actually rolled. I did it. Nat twenty. Nat, uh, no, dirty twenty. All right, that's fair. Thirteen points. Nicely done, Robert. Were you gonna chug a potion? I uh, I gotta do a spell. Okay, yeah, you'll, you'll have to do song. that next round. Uh, wow, nice. She's hurting now. Felix! I'm going to hit this rock with uh, both swords again, and one of them was a nat 20. Damage, reroll damage, add modifiers. Oh, baby, double <laughs> sixes on that damage, plus three. So 15 for the one. And then the other one, do I re-roll that one twice as well or no? Was it a nat 20? No, it was not. Okay, it was a 17. Did 17 hit it? 17 does hit it. That's what it's All right, for, for six damage. So total of 21 points of damage. 
Total of 101 against it. Nicely done. Uh, Leaf the Druid after hip check in Robert Zeppelin into the penalty box. You're up. I'm, I'm healing myself. Okay. Giving yourself the feeler. Oh, uh, you August, betcha. August, you're up. Uh, Felix has significantly wounded this rock creature as shards of stone chipped away and scattered in multiple directions. What you want to do? You can escape. <laughs> Hunt it down later. <laughs> Finish him. All right, I'm going to hit the rock creature. 17. 17 hits. Nine. The rock creature sunders into multiple stones as they cascade around, creating a marble-like effect on the ground. Uh, but it falls in a large heap. New round. Uh, faced with five of you, uh, she weighs her options, utters arcane words, and a big cloud of fog appears and descends throughout the chamber. Oh, <gasps> Robert of Zeppelin, you're up. Uh, I, I healed this round. I went up yep. 10 rounds. Okay, very good. Uh, Copious and Felix, perception checks first. 21. Next 20. Both of you hear scraping like a cane so you know the direction the old bat is moving. Uh, you can attack at minus two to hit her. Not full disadvantage, just minus two, because it is in the clouds. All right, well, I'm not going to attack her. I'm going to reach into my bag of tricks. I have a bunch of ball bearings, and I'm going to pull out a handful of them and throw them towards <laughs> where I hear her running <laughs> in hopes that she will slip and fall. Break a hip. Yes. <laughs> Opius, hey. what are you doing? Uh, is it, poison spray is a cone, is it not? It is. So I'm since I have the the gist of where she's at, I'm going to do poison spray in a cone in that area. That's Would fair. that negate any of the negative? Uh, yes. It it will cause me to roll the negative for my save. Sweet. What's my save? D spell save thirteen. Against. Uh, charisma. You hear sizzling uh, and a screech of pain. How much damage do you do? Uh, well, let's see. With my luck, probably not much. Two points <laughs> out of a die 12. I'll get you, my pretty uh, leaf. You did. I'm sorry. Who was between me and her when this started? Uh, Robert of Zeppelin decided to tackle you by the ankles as you hip checked him. <laughs> he did? Yeah, he backed uh, up, fell into you. you. <laughs> and so is there anybody between myself and her? That depends on your perception check. Okay. <laughs> I hope not. I don't want to kill anybody, but, you know, shit happens. <laughs> My perception is 16. Uh, yes, you can hear her dragging her uh, uh, little duck cane around. I'm going to take a step forward and cast Gust of Wind. You do take a step forward. That is excellent because there are ball bearings everywhere. I'm going to need it. I'm going to need I, a dex I don't check. That, though, do I? <laughs> nope, you do not. I'll take a dex check, please. Okay. Uh, 14. You pass. You find solid footing. Cast the gust of wind. Uh, it goes out, parts the waves, uh, most of it going down the tunnel and probably out the archway. Uh, and everybody behind you, Haggis, and then everybody else, has a clear view of the old bat. Haggis. Blow her backwards. Oh, uh, do I need to make a save? Yes, you do. She's on her ass. <laughs> Says a, a straight saving throw or be pushed 15 feet away from me. Uh, yeah, you push her into the wall. 
because that's a yep. nine uh, minus one. That's an eight. <laughs> Haggis, uh, as the fog parts, uh, you see the little old Biddy who has done nothing but treated you nicely <laughs> on her buttocks, reaching out. Help me, my son. I did, am your mother. <laughs> <laughs> did um did the gust of wind move the balls that were in on the floor? So I oh, won't need to. There's balls everywhere. Oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> they've ricocheted off the wall. Uh, this whole place is nothing but balls. <laughs> Sounds like a bad it's called balls to the walls. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're mature rated, folks. Because <laughs> we're immature. Uh, so yes, you will have to tread lightly. Uh, because it is evident to you now with the parting of the fog that there are obstructions. Are you a halfling? Yeah. yeah. He's got those well, big, so he's barefoot too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Too bad it wasn't Augusta Caltrops. <laughs> is um, is she trying to make? Uh, do I tell she's lying if she wants me to help her? Uh being an eighteen on insight because her persuasion's eighteen. I got an eight. Help me, boy! Help me, my son! <laughs> Come on, man. Boy Scout motto. Yeah, Go save that kid. Yeah. I'll, I'll attack. I guess. <laughs> I'm the attacker. Screw the Boy Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> Show you how to make a fire using two little old lady legs. <laughs> oh, wait, no, no, no. I'm going to fire my crossbow at her. Ouch. Well, it's a better chance of me not slipping and falling. Fair. 18. 18 hits her. Eight. Haggis Crabstain expertly puts the crossbow bolt between the old witch's eyes, causing her head to crack back like she's in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. And she dies. Thanks. You didn't help her at all. Uh, Silence takes over the chamber. And as each of you look around, you notice each of you is a bit on the dinged up side. Uh, You have rocks strewn everywhere, a handful of ball bearings, uh, a little old lady with a bolt in her head, and uh, the nice little homestead. I think it's time to search the damn place. I I specifically want to look in the rubble and see if we find another one of those elemental runes like we found uh, on the hillside. I do find it. I'm going to go find that cane that blew down the stairwell with that old woman. Can I find the ball, the crystal ball in the shelf? I'll tell you what. Everybody roll a D12 and we'll, or everybody roll a D20, straight up D20, and then we'll go in that order since you're all looking for different things. Yeah, 11. 15. 15. 12. 17. 17 first. Crystal ball. Give me an investigation check. Fourteen. Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. Yes, you, thirteen. You find it, it is cracked. Does that change the look of it at all? Yeah, it's got a crack in it. It has a crack. It's got, it's got a crack in it. <laughs> Have you never seen risky business? <laughs> Cracks don't fly. <laughs> you gotta uh, throw a party, you have to get hookers and <laughs> take yeah. care of this. You have to make yeah, sure dance, you take care of the in your college guy. Yeah, uh, it's it's going to seriously diminish the resale value on this item. Uh, two fifteens. So Robert, we'll start with you. What are you looking for? I'm looking for that cane, the duck cane. Give me an investigation. Eighteen plus nineteen gold. You find it, but the wood below the duck's head has been uh, pockmarked by what appears to be poison spray. Is there any way to flush that off? Fluid. Pee on it, you know, like a stingray. I'll piss on it. Okay. Uh, Copious V. Bitters, you were looking for the runes? Yes. Uh, Go ahead and give me an investigation. Uh, Nine. You still find them. Okay. Because each part of that elemental had the runes on it. 
Uh, next up is the 12. Felix, what are you looking for? Uh, I'm going to go up to the old lady and just kind of make sure she's really dead and kind of pat her pockets with the tip of my sword, make sure. I don't want to touch her. I'm afraid of that she's not actually dead, but I kind of want to double tap her, you know, like. Ah, ah. Sure. Yeah, no, that's not a problem. Uh, we all love zombie later. Uh, you, uh, you, double, you double tap her uh, and there's no blood pumping out. Okay. Then, yeah, I'm just going to pat down her pockets, see if there's anything that she's carrying. There is a small amulet. Then I'm going to pocket that. Okay. It is a silver amulet. It looks like a cameo. Last but not least, Leaf the Druid. Muted. I was going to look in the cupboard. Uh, there you got the things out of. Uh, the crystal ball cupboard is empty. The uh, archway parchment is empty. The next one over holds a, a small ivory chest on top of a book. I will take both. Okay. Do you want to open it? Yes, I do. Which one would you like to open? Oh, what the hell? Let's open the ivory chest first. Uh, it has a simple latch on it. Uh, you expertly do it. <laughs> and it's filled with gems. Oh, okay. Now you can open the Necronomicon. Watch your fingers, though. I'll pocket the gems. 65 gold pieces worth of gems. And now, I take it the chest isn't really worth much. Uh, yeah, it might be worth something. Five, ten gold pieces. Yeah. Well, I will uh, open the book. I want to see what the book says. <laughs> on it. As you open up the book, the cover itself has no writing, no distinction, no nothing. As you open the book, the elemental symbol that Copious V. Bitters has found and you saw on the Mephits uh, is present, followed by Diary of Terra Displasia. Written in Elvish? Written in Elvish. Which I read. Mm -hmm. uh, you're thumbing through a lot of information. It seems as though several weeks ago, she had a problem with the people of Lumberton and then went to, um, uh, what was the other one? Starts with a B, Belfast, uh, and had similar problems with them. Uh, as she went to Soto on her way to Metcalf, uh, she was treated poorly, according to her missives in here. And she decided to take up arms against these environmental invaders. Uh, and she called forth the elementor, elemental powers that she had at her disposal in order to teach them a lesson. Uh, the entire diary is written to the tune that she is the victim and the hero and the encroaching halflings, demi-humans, and humans are problematic to nature's way. Uh -huh. Which, as a druid, even an anti-druid, you may or may not on nature's lands is problematic. But it appears as though you have found the evidence required uh, to show the Council of Metcalf and obtain your uh, My Little Pony Zonkies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course, you're a couple people short. Well, that's all right. We'll have an extra for you know, kind of <laughs> luggage and things. <laughs> Got to haul it back. I, I will inform the rest of the party of what I found in, in so far as the book. Grandpa's story time bores the shit out of the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs> but I will let them know, you know, it's time we could head back and get our little ponies. There are no other exits from this area. The rest of the room just contains mundane equipment, uh, salad making utensils, uh, a bed, a nondescript bed. Uh, she is what we would call a hippie. Uh, and that is the vibe that is given off in her uh might want to look for some smokums. Uh, you know what? I'd be willing to D12 against that. They're in the salad. 11. <laughs> That's right. So, All of a sudden, Haga starts to see a lot of colors, man. <laughs> 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 you 
each yeah. one of you is described as an orc to his face. <laughs> <laughs> so all you got to do is get out of here yep. and return to Metcalf. Uh, I assume that there's like a broom or something. We can sweep these ball bearings up. I'm just going to leave them on the floor. Sure. All right. Let's leave them. Yeah, you, you can you can sweep them up if you'd like. Uh, well, no, I just want to sweep them out of the I want to sweep them out of the way so I don't fall down on my way out. Yeah, that's fair. I'm not going to Janitorial services will not be making an appearance for several weeks here at this location. So uh, as long as you kick them out of the way with your boot, everybody roll a straight up D20. If it's a one, you fail. Anything else, even a two is fine. Is that a one? Yep. <laughs> Who was it that said leave them there? <laughs> So every, everybody else passed natural 20 okay uh leaf the druid says ah screw it it'll be fine <laughs> four hit points of damage <laughs> crack your elbow onto the stone surface Bust my butt. The, the brazier over and light anything on caught fire. everything on fire yeah <laughs> Oh, it's a stone floor. It's not gonna burn. I gotta throw a torch. So is if we make it downstairs and once again examine this room closely, no other exit but the one we came in. That is correct. All right. Do we have to jump back over the underground stream, right? Oh yeah, that's right. You do, don't you? <laughs> you know, water comes out somewhere. Yeah, we need the book. Let's make sure the book does not land in the water. Oh, I've That's got the, the book. It'll be safe with me. I'm not <laughs> oh It'll be safe uh, with him. He just fell on the bearings. Don't give yeah, it to him. Okay. I, I'm going to go first, okay? Just so you guys are happy. We'll go first. Why don't you leave the book on this side? You oh, jump over, no. and then we'll throw the book to you. Ain't going to happen. <laughs> Why don't we tether each other off to a rope? I did that once. Look at my hands. Rug burns from trying to save Weave. I, I'm gonna kick. No, I'm gonna, what? Let, 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 let me go on the other side, and I'll take a rope, and I'll tether it over there to make it a little easier for you guys to get across. Wait, you know, I I did. I wanted to leave a torch going against the cabinets before we left. Yes. Okay. Hey, it's it's a call sign, like the Wet Bandits. Yes, you're going to be the smoky bandits because uh, these rooms are going to fill with smoke as all of her worldly possessions and undiscovered hemp uh, goes up <laughs> in, goes up in flames, <laughs> causing you to cheech and chong this jump. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, so, if you don't make the jump, you're still happy. I'm not going to jump. I want to cast spider climb on myself. Uh, there is a problem with that. What's that? Well, no, uh, you're going to have to go in here. You're going to have to go up into the darkness to find the ceiling to cross. I can over. see in the dark, so it shouldn't be a problem. Shouldn't be a problem at all, as long as there's nothing up there. Yeah. Well, I'll yeah. go up and find out. Okay. I don't need these ball bearings. Yeah. Uh, Leaf the Druid disappears in the darkness. Who wants to jump across next? Okay. Does he tell us what he's doing, or do we just seem like spider crawl up the wall? He, did, he didn't say shit, so. I did not say <laughs> Where's Felix? Felix, get your bow out. You no, hey, old man, come back here. Felix can't see in the dark, dude. Robert is definitely like, go ahead. Is it strength or dex dexterity on the jump? It is dexterity, but it's only an 11 because jumping over is much easier than jumping to start. Oh, hell, I rolled 14 start. Uh, running jump goes in. <sighs> Who's next? Go ahead. You want the rope? If you it's throw too late rope, for the if you throw a rope, I'll give you an <laughs> you boy. Hey, tell man thing, I love him. <laughs> oh god. Join us next time with all and that is exactly why I'm climbing instead of trying to jump. 13 hit points of damage as you cascade yourself off. Uh Robert of Zeppelin, Felix, Haggis, maybe Leaf, all here. Splash! <laughs> you hear screaming from a gnome yelling at the old man who climbed up. Damn you, Leaf! Get off my stone! Uh, I am going to need two D20s from you, please. Oh, boy. I'll throw a rope when I get a chance. 
That's four and fourteen. What is it? Four and fourteen. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> uh. All right, I'm going to call you Man Fang the second. Uh, you want to throw a rope at him, Robert? Yeah. Can okay. you see in the dark? Yes, I can. I can. Okay. Uh, you can try and hit him with a rope. All right. Nope, I rolled a two. <laughs> I rolled on myself. He throws the rope out but forgets to release, and it slaps down six feet. <laughs> uh, copious, a.k.a. Bob... <laughs> Drifts off from view. Uh, well, <laughs> Felix, Hoggis, uh, as Robert of Zeppelin goes, <laughs> uh, which one of you would like to try and jump next? I could try to throw you a rope. Uh, I don't think you can throw a rope to your own feet. <laughs> I'm just going to go for a jump. Felix, Hagas, uh, smoke begins to pour out of the stairwell and fill the room behind you. Felix, what? make your jump. <laughs> Felix, you got a torch? Uh, what is the modifier for this one? Dex. Oh, good. I got a 12. <laughs> you, you kind of skin your knee on your landing, but you are safe and sound. Hagas, <laughs> your vision is starting to become a little bit cloudy. Your sinuses are starting to close as the voluminous amount of smoke by the terrorist Robert of Zeppelin uh, begins filling all the chambers. And you're strangely hungry. <laughs> and you're seeing a lot of colors, man. And you know what? You aren't positive, but you're pretty sure the druid is now a spider. <laughs> I'll jump my way out. It's fine. Uh, fourteen. Yep. Uh, does the barrel roll? Uh, a moment of silence for all those that we've lost is like the Oscars. <laughs> uh, you guys can now make your way back up uh, to where you have a few people who are. Going to have some questions for you. <laughs> I'm assuming I made my trip across the ceiling okay? Yep. Uh, okay. However, you you're look high. around and you notice you're one shy. Oh. What happened to Copious? He didn't hold on. Da -na -na, da -na -na, da -na -na. Do you guys have a flag you can throw into the water? <laughs> I've had, I'm going to stop and take a leak in the, in the river. <laughs> <laughs> Of love. Wait, can I? I want if he pees in the river, I get hellish rebuke. Are, are you an attack? Are you talking while you're floating in the pee river? I'm just asking. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure you're out of range, Pud. Yeah, I gotta take damage for that to you know. Isn't he on? Uh, if you swallow water. He is going to take damage, but that's from hitting a rock with his four. All right, I'm moving out. Me too. Back up out of this hole. Yeah, let's get out of here. I guess you're going with him, or are you going to mourn the loss by throwing in gold coins and giving a <laughs> Abu Rukata, Alleluia? You could throw something gold in, all right. I threw a little golden shower in the river. That's what I did. Gold tea leaves, tea bag. Uh, if you're following them, you guys uh, will clearly know the way out. Haggis, however, uh, let's test your memory. Give me an intelligence roll. Check, not save. Four. <laughs> you completely forget that there were gemstones around here, uh, mostly because your sinuses are really bothering you. Uh, you guys all climb back up to where the split is. You know where the top layer uh, went. Uh, I assume you don't want to go back that way. Uh, you get outside, and it's, uh, it's about dinner time, uh, and down... In the smoldering remains of Lumberton is a small camp of survivors <laughs> uh, waiting to greet you. Uh, as you make your way into Lumberton, uh, Trey, Satin, and little Tiffany go. Um, 
Where are the others? We <laughs> fell in the river, the underground river, and the other two dove in to try to save him, and we lost them all. Winners write history books, folks. <laughs> okay. Is there any news? We found what was causing all the problems. The witch, she has been taken care of. Burn the witch! Burn the witch! Do you have any proof of the witch? I do, right here. A book? Her diary. Do you have any she proof of the body? Of the body? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the body. Do you have, like, I don't know, her head? Could the crystal her, work? We've got our cane. Uh, crystal, the cane, the book. Give me a persuasion check there, Leaf. It go. I ain't a good one for this. I'll do some intimidating persuasion here. There's no, no, no witnesses. Leaf, you can uh, roll at advantage then. And I, you'll have to explain what that means to me. I'm sorry. Two d twenty. Take the highest one. Okay. Seventeen. That's definitely better. Eighteen. Uh, did she blow up in a puff of smoke? She's she did not. It melted away. Yes. Huh. Elfish witch. Do we know why she took vengeance upon our peaceful settlements? Well, after reading her diary, apparently she did it because she felt slighted by your people in your settlements. We are not like that at all. No, she thought you were, and that's why she sicked her elementals on you. Is there any way we can recover Weave's body? Well, we're headed down river, and we're going to look as we go and see if they washed out. So we'll keep an eye out for them. Fair um, enough. I just want to interject that if I catch up to Manfang and Weave's bodies while floating and I'm still alive, I'm lashing them together with my own eyelashes and hair <laughs> and surfing their bodies down the street. It's too bad you don't have a crystal ball. You can put a bloody handprint on it and call it <clears throat> Uh Can you ask Manfang how many hit points he had when last we met? And Copius, how many uh, hit points do you have? He had 20. Uh, okay. Left? Yeah. yeah. Uh, da, 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 15, I think. Okay, fair enough. Uh, are you guys going to travel at night? Okay. I guess we'll pull up here till morning. That's cool. I don't have a problem traveling at night. Seems like some people can't say you do. Who wants to uh, take first watch? I'll take second. Felix, are you going to take third or Haggis? Third. Morning arrives without incident. Uh, the mood is somber as they mourn the loss of Weave and those other two guys. Uh, <laughs> Not me, just the other two. Uh, Tiffany has started to finally come around, although she's still a little bit skittish around Robert. <laughs> he tends to look over his shoulders. Uh, and you guys may now travel to Soto, bypassing uh, Belfast. Uh, at Belfast, uh, I will take investigation checks to see if any of the corpse, I mean, former uh, associates of yours are floating by. Yeah, I didn't see anything. Nope. Nope. 15. They ain't up there. Nope. <laughs> 11. As you arrive at Soto uh, on the evening, you notice it is just a mess. Uh, who wants to take first watch? I will. Okay. Hagas? Nope. Second. Same thing. Leaf? Third? Safe and sound. You are a scant four hours away from uh, the council. Um, so we continue to walk down the river? Uh, well, the river cuts in and out. Okay. Uh, you, you never actually followed the river itself, uh, which is a problem. At Soto, nobody saw anything. Uh, so 
Uh, as you arrive in town, the mood is festival like as who knows what some kind of dumbass religious festival is going on. Uh, you can head up and speak with the council if they are in session. Sounds like a plan to me. Who would like to see if they are in session? I will. D12 against me. And four. They are in session in Metcalf. Uh, there are door guards again. They eyeball Haggis, crap stained, uh, since it's only been a week since his little bell ringing stunt uh, occurred. Uh, and they announce what do you want? We have come with news and reports of what has gone up in the mountain. Get in line. <laughs> uh, copious D12 against me, please. 11. Okay. Uh, Robert, Leaf, Felix, Haggis, uh, also Tiffany, uh, Satin, and Trey. Uh, you guys all walk in. There is a large crowd assembled. Uh, they are all bitching about different things, including prices, taxation, no representation, and uh, overly aggressive city guards. Uh, after an hour and a half, uh, it is finally your turn. And the Council of Metcalf is... <sighs> Okay, what's your story? Now, clearly, they don't even remember who you are. I can't believe you don't remember who I am. If I ring the bell, they might remember. <laughs> Did you miss the part about the overly aggressive town guards? <laughs> uh, the history of the villages up the hill. Oh, 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 yes. Yeah, the village, the, vill the village thingy with the uh, where? Where's the loud mouth? Unfortunately, in crossing, he fell into a river, and two of our companions went to try to save him from the river, and were also swept away and have not been seen since. <laughs> That's too bad. <laughs> Uh, go ahead and give me a persuasion check. Let's see if they buy that crap. 13. Well, that is unfortunate. We are very sorry for your loss as well as the loss of our eardrums. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, who can go ahead and preferably quickly recap this as we're starting to wind down? Please. Tell the stories that you have read and the evidence of such. Grandpa that... story time, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what well, we found was a witch down inside the mountain in an old tomb. And she had been uh, felt that she had been uh, belittled by the townspeople in those villages. So she turned in elementals against them. And that's what was causing the villages to sink. They were tunneling under them. We quickly dispatched the witch when she attacked us with one of her elementals. Process the witch, she. But we have her diary that lays out exactly everything that happened and what she did. It's a shame you don't have samples of the rock elemental. Now, we haven't uh, exactly given up on our companions. That same river flows past your town. And we've been looking for them as we came back down the mountain. We still think that they they may have survived this. We just haven't located them yet. So we will we will be collecting their mounts also as our reward, as promised. A witch, you say? A witch. Oh, we her. She, point, she points at Tiffany and goes, "Is that the witch?" That's a little girl. The witch is dead. Ding dong, baby. Ding dong. 
<laughs> and you have proof of this. Yes, I do. Right here's her diary. Right here's her cane. And he has her orb. Yeah, I have, I have her small amulet. Ooh, very nice. Um, Leaf, you've been very persuasive. Go ahead and roll persuasion at advantage. I better get a good roll. From one to two. <laughs> no, that was pretty good. 17. Wait a minute. Do I get any plus on that? No. 17. Fire, fire, fire. <laughs> we are ready to render our decision. While we feel that you have seemingly made your case, uh, we feel that there are certain elements that have not been completely addressed that uh, require pensive activity on our part, we would like to inquire the method that you, your two associates, the brave heroes, failed in their efforts to extract uh, one, albeit loudmouth, uh, citizen of the realm uh, from a river. Uh, we do not understand how that is possible for Big time adventurers. I have this. I have this. They jumped in, towing a rope in play with them. We were able to attach it around, and we had them, and we're driving back. The current was ungodly swift, but unfortunately, old rope snapped. Here's the end where you can see where it snapped apart. And it they does look frayed. <laughs> and they were swept away. Unfortunately, they was gone so quickly from the speed of said river it gone in the dark it was inside the cave i there was nothing else to do and but yet we still had to solve the issue with what was causing the death and destruction on this mountain so as much as we'd like to proceed forward with them at that time we had to move forward to discover and stop the issue at hand hey robert there's a song you can sing to help persuade them it's called hangman hangman you know i fail every song is uh is Manfang ready to join us? I think Manfang's out for the day, unfortunately. Oh, that's fine. I hope he gets to feeling better. Uh the back doors that you entered slam open, and an angry male voice yells out, That is bullshit. Uh, the entire ensemble turns around to see a bloody Manfang. Minus one charisma point because he has a nice jagged scar across his face oh. from his natural one on trying to dodge rocks. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> weave. Uh, their clothes are still sopping wet. Weave storms to the front and demands justice. Ah, there he is. Uh, minus one to your charisma there, sport. For your natural <laughs> one. Uh, <laughs> Weave angrily gives a diatribe of hate-filled information about how he was rudely intimidated by one Robert of Zeppelin. Uh, and he believes, I believe, one copious V. Bitters had intent for murder against me. The Council of Metcalf looks at him, scratches their head, and they're like, well, it is nice to see you again, citizen. <laughs> he continues his angry diatribe while Manfang, still woozy from the rock damage two days previously, uh, tries to step forward and assuage, assuage the angry nature of Weave, who is now spitting and sputtering his angry rebukes towards the treatment leveled against his community and him personally. Council, would you like me to help calm this man for you? We will hear from uh, Bloody Scar Guy. What happened to you? I fell in a river trying to save him. He fell in, so I tried to help him out. So you all knitted your lies together. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the truth. 
The what truth is there. Roll <laughs> persuasion at advantage, man, Fang. Oh, well, your persuasion sucks. I know. Six? That's out of two rolls? Roll it again. I forgot. Out of band. Don't forget the negatives now that you have that big scar. Yeah. <laughs> 17. We're very sorry for the injuries that you have sustained in saving <sighs> citizen of the realm. Uh, we will get you clerical healing, but we don't know if we can uh, recover the severity of the gash across your face. Not so much here or here, but right here. Uh, so you were not present for the explanation of your friends, and it is your accusation, Mr. Man Fang, that you dove into the river to attempt to save this individual's life. Yes. Yes. Weave, when confronted with that, points out that while you did take significant damage of face kissing a jagged rock, you did manage to grab a hold of his arm and swing him to safety. He will go ahead and say that he bears no ill will against you, and you have treated him honorably, even obtaining sustenance last night in the cold as you huddled together for warmth. Oh, <laughs> still weird now. So, Weave shuts up as Robert of Zeppelin gives him the old <laughs> side eye. Um, he asks, uh, the council members ask Man Fang if you have seen the last member of your group. As you look around, you notice that Copious V Bitters is not present among the group. No, I have not seen him. That is unfortunate. Uh, they turn to leaf. While we are saddened at the loss of one of your compatriots, we will go ahead and honor the agreement that each one of you will receive a zonkey, albeit one of them will be a pretty pony. Uh, we thank you, and we also will reward you with the uh, award uh, mitigated on the previous problem. Um, they then ask uh, Weave, Satin, and Trey if they are happy with the result. <laughs> uh -oh. Trey and Satin are happy with the result, although they point out that their villages are completely destroyed and will need to be rebuilt from the ground up and ask for frontier settlers to go ahead and go there. Weave has a problem. <laughs> we keep talking, he's going to have a big problem. I think we all know Weave's got a problem, and I know what will fix it. Weave points out that the threats against his personal well-being and safety have still not been addressed by the council, and he has yet another beef about this. Council, I, this the council exhales and says, we will hear from Mr. Zeppelin and Mr. Bitters as to these accusations before we render judgment. Oh, sorry, Mr. Bitters. You don't have a voice. <laughs> uh, Mr. Zeppelin, can you rebuke these comments or confirm them? Sing it. He was angry. And I, I, I was saying the, the story of what was going on re regarding them with the tale of how to calm Mr. Weave with all the destruction that was going on and the horrible excitement of Spiders attacking and what else attacked us? I can't remember everything. Sea bear said the owlbear attacking. He was beside himself in panic. I just had slight conversations to calm him, to reduce his excitement before he incites panic within all the village. And he kept pissing his pants the entire time. I mean, <laughs> You know, I think it's important to point out to the council. Solve this problem. 
just because he's an unhappy client because he didn't get exactly what he wanted, and he wants to throw out lies. I lost a friend. He died in that river. And this is what I get. Felix? Uh, yeah, I think it's important to point out to the council that Weave is not an adventure, and we traveled many days on end, and that takes a toll on people mentally. So simple conversations that we had with him, he took offense to him because he was a little tired from being on the trail with us. Guy's a whiner. A guy is a whiner. His own parents don't like him. They threw him out at a young age. Come on, you know it. I can see it in your faces every time his mouth opens. Hell, the rest of the group that was with us don't even like the man. Weave is beat red, and you can see a vein on the top of his head pulsing. Behind you, the council notices something and says, Yes, young lady. Little Tiffany stands up, looking fearful at Robert Zeppelin, <laughs> and says in a meek voice, save me from a bug. Yes. The council is clearly moved by the comment and reassures the young girl that she will never have to worry about bugs again. They're going to kill her. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a head wound. <laughs> Still fuming, Weave realizes that he has been beaten in his argument. And the council asks Weave if this is the case. Both Trey and Satin shake their heads yes, and Weave says... Yeah, that's what happened. We reiterate that we will go ahead and grant full reward for a job well done. Uh, you have proven your worth. You may pick up My Little Pony and the Zonkeys at the stable. They motion to a secretarial individual who whips out a parchment and starts writing a missive. We again regret that you have suffered the loss of one of your associates, but are thankful that you have been able to go ahead and render a conclusion, satisfactory conclusion to this problem. And we thank you for your service. You are released and it's time for lunch. Weave storms out. Trey and Satin, shake each one of your hands because there's no COVID there and it's okay to do. Uh, both men will go ahead and take care of little Tiffany uh, and they will leave to go ahead and find their old lodgings here in town. Uh, the Council of Metcalf concludes, walk out and the guards open up the doors and everybody who had remained during your discussion begins to leave. What would you guys like to do? Before Tiffany goes, I want to say, thank you, little girl. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm going to head down to the river and start looking for <laughs> copious. For, for carp? Yeah, yeah carp pretty much. Carporous V bitters? As you guys exit, several of the townspeople of Metcalf thank you and go, hey, good job. Yeah, that weave, he's just an asshole. Don't worry about him. A, lot. Yeah, yeah. a, a shriek is heard. Weave, weave anywhere? Weave is not anywhere. Uh, he has disappeared off into the crowd, storming mad. Perhaps you will meet him at the that, tavern. Is that an elvish shriek? <laughs> It is not an Elvis shriek. It is the shriek of a townswoman, and a crowd is gathering on the main thoroughfare and have encompassed something in the direction that Weave was walking. Oh, well, I think I'll head that way. Hopefully he died on that way. 
Sadly, Weave is not dead, nor is he present, but the wet, mangled body of a severely injured, minus 12 hit points. <laughs> yeah, you survived with three. Uh, is laying face down with an outstretched hand, gasping for help. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to immediately throw a healing spell. I'll throw a cure wounds. He's got to pee on his wounds to make him stop burning. I can, I'm going to help pee on the wounds. I'm going to go for break. The witch, <laughs> <laughs> Compass V Bitters, has survived with three hit points and made his way back waterlogged but safe and sound. And he asks, uh, uh, Where's my zonky at? <laughs> hey, we're on our way to get those zonkies, little buddy. Who picked up the parchment from the clerk? Yes. Okay. I, I, I'll heal him for 11 points. You feel much better, Copious. Oh, Man Fang said he was going to try and mend wound on him. I can help. I got no, 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 no. G -g Give me the medicine check there, Man Fang. <laughs> <laughs> Die, that's all you gotta do. All right, let's see. Let's see what you got. Oh, that damn. Wait, no. Why are you going so low with medical? I'm pulling a dagger out and putting it right on his sack if he touches me. <laughs> <laughs> a three. A three? Yes. Apparently, Man Fang feels that uh, you are in shock and you need kicked in the groin at region <laughs> to, to break out of the shock syndrome. Oh, Hellish rebuke. <laughs> <laughs> Skills. Now you see what it's like to be in this household. In, in the middle of the street, the crowd parts away as anger boils over from the waterlogged copious V bitters. Uh, Leaf, the druid, the parchment uh, requests that you A, go to the stables to pick up your okay. new mounts, and B, go to the office of Metcalf Accounting to receive your reward, of which the sum, I believe, was 500 gold pieces. Is that correct? Well, then that's where we're going. Which one do you want to go to first? I want to get Let's go get the gold first. Uh, the accountant's office is not too busy today, uh, but you are going to have to wait because there's a sign that says, be back in five minutes, gone to lunch. Outside, a bard plays elevator music akin to the Blues Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, you remain right. calm as the door opens up and the accountant eating a sandwich asks, may I help you? I'll show him the parchment. He's, you and notice that he has money. a glob of mustard on his face. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you go in and he asks you if you would like gold pieces or gems I would rather have the gems I think half and half half and half guys I just I'm straight up gold it trains uh, gem, gems are a little easier to carry I think gold is probably more useful for bartering gold Right. You gold want gold? We'll, with we'll take gold. I don't it's care. Ex gold is accepted everywhere. It's like American Express. Well, Copious and Leaf want gems. Uh, did you want to divide it equally? Actually, I think it was 600, wasn't it? 100 for each of you? It wasn't yeah. 500 each? Sounds good to me. I I think, not a third level, it wasn't. <laughs> Uh, I'll go. I'll go a hundred each. So Leaf and Copious can get one hundred gold pieces worth of gems, a mixture of a large one and several smaller ones. Hagas, uh, which did you want to weigh in on? Gold, gold, gold. Uh, Felix, Hagas, Manfang, and Robert, you all get one hundred gold pieces uh, with the guy's thanks. He finishes his sandwich and now has another glob of mustard over here. That's all right. Let's leave Mustard Face. Go get some zonk ass. Yeah. The stable is at the other end of Metcalf, uh, as akin to a crude drawing uh, on the back of the parchment. As you travel across, you yet again see Tiffany, Satin, and uh, Trey. Uh, again, they nod and give you thanks. 
And around the corner, you hear a verbose and boisterous individual bitching. I'll it be right a, back. It is a <laughs> voice that you all recognize. I want to go get the donkeys first. I'll come back to see the aftermath. Okay, so I've got Robert headed over to the boisterous individual. I have Man Fang going for the Zonky. I'm going for Zonkies. Zonky? Yeah, I'm going to go for Zonkies too. Zonky, Copious, and Haggis? I'll I go to the to, man. The man. I have to follow my heart. I'm, I'm going with it, Robert. <laughs> Robert, Copious, and Haggis turn the corner and they're standing up on a literal soapbox is weave and then they attempted to kill me they cared nothing about our buildings these foreigners are a problem and the crowd goes yeah and then they take a step back as you three approach like you're in tombstone (laughs) weave baby weave turns around jumps off the soapbox and tears into the crowd. I, I will. I tell Weave I want to be his Huckleberry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys are a little far off, so if you're going to get him, you're going to have to use missile or magic. Hmm. Wait, but there's still a crowd watching everything, right? Yes. All right. I'll just tell. I'm going to wave. By the way, it's lovely knowing you, Weave. Weave Clanton heads off into the sunset. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at the stables, uh, you have your choice. There are normal zonkies, which are black and white striped, and there are also two albino, which appear to be uh, orange and white. That's true. Ooh, I want an orange and white. Okay. Uh, the albino orange and white. It's like a painting. Oh, we all want the orange and white. I think we're going to have to. Yeah, you better roll for him. Manfang gets the pony. <laughs> Manfang wanted the pony. Yes, did. Yeah, and my little pony right off the bat. Yes. So, I so the other, that. whoever wants the second one, you're rolling for it. Yeah. I gotta stay. I, I wanted my little pony. I'm the one that said that. No. Leaf, Leaf, Manfang, and Felix, give me D12s. Top two can have their pick. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm taking mine to Earl Shives and having it tricked out afterwards. So I'm not worried about it at all. Seven. Nine. 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 Nine and ten. Felix and Manfang have the albino zonkeys. Uh, Leaf, uh, the guy shrugs his shoulders and says, maybe you can trade it at the next town. Yeah. Maybe I'll get it a die job. Uh, I'm going to go odd zonkeys, even weave. Even weave Robert Copius and Haggis, an extremely well dressed individual carrying a loot, approaches you. Hello, my lords. Are you the heroes of Soph? Yeah, what's up? I am Thomas of Aquinas, uh, and I am a bard of future repute. Uh, I would like to hear your story, and I would gladly purchase you a beverage in order to hear it, so that I may retell the greatness of you, hallowed heroes. Robert the Bard of Zeppelin does not give away his stories without some money. I'm a little bit shy on coin as I'm it a little were. bit shy on the story. Listen, Jack, we either get cash or you get your ass out. No, wait, I'll tell him the story as long as he really emphasizes the heroism of Copious Volbitters the third and mentions my brewery. You sell out, bastard. <laughs> I would love to hear the the valiant efforts of Copious V Bitters the third and his strength in brew mastery. May we step aside to the penguin. He's going to molest you, little dwarf. I know, I feel a little creeped out, but yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on, little boy. Haggis, Haggis, are you going to hang out with uh, Robert or Copius? Do I still, where did uh, Weave go? I want to follow him. 
Uh, we went to the crowd, and uh, he is going to be hiding. But give me an investigation check. Go get him, Haggis. Get him. 16. Uh, you uh, run to the back of the crowd, and a few people do this. <laughs> give me an insight check. They're pulling wood. That's good. 17. Uh, these guys look a little sketchy <laughs> and they're pointing towards an alley. <laughs> Go get your candy. Go get them, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Robert, you want to come with? Oh, you've already plunged through the crowd. Robert is dealing with uh, the bard who will sing the heralds of Copious V. Bitters. Master Brewer, hero of the realm, savior of children, and lover of many. <laughs> I don't know, but that's a pretty coat of colors you got there, Joseph. <laughs> Where are you heading to after this? Uh, he is taking uh, Copious to the Penguin. A tavern. Mm, and after that, where what town do you travel forth to next? I travel everywhere. The road is my friend. Wow, it is you, my mistress. When are you and your mistress <laughs> gathering again? Oh, it yeah. is hard to tell. I have not yet been able to tell the tale of Copious V. Better's Hero of the Realm yet. There are plenty of ladies out there that want to hear of his prowess in manhood. No, that's or, a short story. No, no mood. That's a, a short story. story. <laughs> Not after I get done with it, my oh. liege. <laughs> he is going to create an epic tale of you that will scarcely be believed, and I'm sure... Uh, not cause any sword slingers to come looking to take you down a peg at all. Uh, change your name to Copious V. Reams. <laughs> <laughs> as long as they get the name of the, the booze in the story, it's fine. It's such a pitch, man. Uh, Leaf, Felix, and Manfang, uh, you also possess the other three zonkeys. As you leave the stable, an individual uh, dressed in normal clothing comes up and goes, them's for sale? No, them's uh, not for sale. You're not touching it or molesting. <laughs> <laughs> Just asking, friend. Zonkeys are a rare thing in these parts. They're very valuable. I could give you quite the penny for them. I know. It's done. I sell them. You could go ask them. We'll probably sell them. <laughs> if you change your mind, ask for Manny. Huh. The word Where? will find me. Anywhere. Anywhere in Metcalf. Okay. Manny's fine mounts. I think I'm going to have to multi-class here. Thief, bard, rogue. Uh, back to Haggis. I'll look into the alley. Just look. Not going in. Just look. Uh, there's at least one passed out drunk in there, and it smells ripe. <laughs> is there a is there like a connecting alley that would go into that one? It looks like it butts up against the city wall, but it's a T junction, so you might be able to go left or right. Might. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dead end, friend. He's got to be down there. Yeah. How do you know that? I, I, I asked the guy, how does he know that? I, uh, <laughs> I saw him. Oh. Would... The lies he was spreading about, she foul. You You've... are a milk carton waiting to happen there, Haggis. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> you deserve better. You are heroes. <laughs> you should go down there and deal with them like I would. Yeah, I could climb into my van. Get in my van. <laughs> have free candy in my van. Yeah. Boy. <laughs> you go first. Yeah. You want a Twinkie? <laughs> I I can, but I've got a bad leg, so I'll only slow you down. 
Yeah, you guys are going to be looking for a panel, a windowless panel, man, here with the screaming Haggis crafts. Oh, my Driving by. With Manny's fine mounts on the side. <laughs> uh, he, he, he kind of rubs his leg like it's uh, like he's taking an arrow to the knee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just wait. You know, I'm, I'm gonna stand right there, not doing anything, just standing. All right. Uh, you now notice that uh, there are two more associates of his, just kind of looking around, yeah. kind of watching the crowd disperse. Boy, you don't pick up signs. Smacking <laughs> <laughs> okay. you. Hey, you know, there's some real life lessons here, Nicholas. Yeah. If you pay attention, yeah, I, I, you just, I'll go. They're, they're I'm, not sly at all about this. Yeah, I know. I, I'll go in. I'm good. I'm good. Don't take the candy, little boy. Uh, well, copious. Uh, they go into the room and uh, into the penguin, grab a seat, and uh, the gentleman requests the two finest ales that you can make for my friend, who is an ale connoisseur here. Uh, the waitress, give me an insight check. Oh. Oh. 12. She rolls her eyes at him. Uh, clearly, she knows this individual. Um, but she walks off to go ahead and get the beverages. Uh, they take down a seat, and he loudly proclaims, that he would like to go ahead and transcribe the legendary exploits of what was your last name again? Bitters. It? Bitters. Of copious bitters. The hero. Oh, I will well. I will go ahead and make sure posterity never forgets the name of copious bitters. You are my friend. I will take care of you. Oh, creeped out. The waitress slams down two ales and goes, am I putting this on your tab? Of course, fair lady. Yes, go away now. I must transcribe the epic tale as told to me, Thomas Aquinas, by Copious Bittersman. I am ready to transcribe the legend. Uh, Robert, did you go in? Oh. <laughs> maybe, maybe I look at the camera next time. Uh, Haggis, are you just going to go ahead and abandon the fact that uh, your quarry may or may not have gone down this dark alley filled with uh, lawfully divergent individuals? Yeah, I'm aware. That's uh, not an answer, though. <laughs> is there a, I, I don't want to, but if... Um... If there's like a magic shop or alchemy shop nearby, I could. D12 against me. Nine. Seven. Uh, no, not in this region. You'll have to check a different ward of the city for that. Cool. I'm going to head to the tra tavern. The uh, three amigos. I'm going to look for. Uh... Crapstein. Uh, as you uh, turn around, Crapstein is making his way back through the area where the crowd was, and you also witness three unscrupulous individuals kind of eyeballing him. Uh, Haggis says he wants to go to the tavern. All right. Well, the tavern's this way, but it's full of bullshit and lies. <laughs> Are you going to go to the penguin? Is there oh. another tavern? No, oh, there's uh, there's tons of taverns in Metcalf. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, what? Where was it that it was short? This place had short people. <laughs> it yeah. was the yeah, it was Saskatchewan. It was the Saskatchewan. Yeah, I'll go to that one. Okay. Uh, you arrive and you will find Tiffany, Satin, and uh, Trey in there getting a meal for the little girl. Hey, little girl. Hey. <laughs> I am never a vile. I could give to her. She is Who uh, with me with all these zonkeys. Hey, Nicholas. Felix and uh, Manfang. Okay. 
Uh, by the way, you three are wandering around town with zonkeys and have no clue as to where any of these guys no, are. At. Not at all. Yeah, and it's not knowing that these zonkeys are very valuable a commodity, and me having been have not gambled in several days. I got the itch. I got the itch. I got my zonkey right here. I. You guys are Big Jake. <laughs> well, let's go. If you're wanting to gamble so bad, we can take you back to that nice bar you were gambling in the last time we were. That here. would be the Saskatchewan. Uh, I'm pretty sure that gambling is also not. Uh, it's it's not, not legal. legal if frowned you're, upon. We, I don't. Yeah, I think it's more than not uh, frowned upon based on the parchment that we saw when we first entered the town. Ah, those well, are just words. I, I don't think that Haggis and Copius and Robert want, must not have wanted these zonkeys that they I don't think for. they did. I don't, um, don't have forget to. Felix, and, the Manitoba across the street, filled with little people, did not mind gambling at all. Um, hmm. I might go over to the Manitoba. There you go. Well, if you're going to do that, then... Duck your head. We got to yeah, keep... Uh, what are you going to do with your... What are you going to do with your zonkeys? Is there a place where I can, I don't know, stable him for a few minutes? Like a fence post? He's going to get stolen. <laughs> sure, there's a fence post out there. So nice little, I, nice little I, unicorn head. I'm sitting on the outside, which is across the way from the Manitoba. You no, know, mm. you are a couple blocks away. You're at the oh, penguin. Like you're, the you're across the street at the uh, from the penguin. Is that yeah, what I don't like? really want to leave my zonkey unattended. It doesn't have the car alarm installed just yet. Not yet. Uh, Copious is, hasn't been tricked out either. I want to get mine tricked out. Where's that place? Get Lojack put on mine. <laughs> I'm gonna I, got the, I, I got the club. I'm going to get hydraulics put on mine. So Felix is feeling the itch to go ahead and gamble. Leaf and Manfang, are you going to all two of you going to guard all six of the zonkeys uh, from the we're... prying eyes of the civilian population here. Yeah, if there's no stable where we keep it, are there guards about that we could ask about that? Sure. Uh, I'd go up to a guard and ask, is there a safe place to stable these zonkeys? There are two stables in town, sir. Uh, one, which is most likely where you got them, uh, is very safe and secure. Uh, the other one is just inside the gate and down uh, the alley uh, next to the uh, city wall. Well, I think probably we should take these zonkeys back where we got them and request and pay to, to stable them until we're ready to leave town. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. You all right with that, Felix? Because you got to yeah, help take yeah, them that, back. That sounds I'm not good to doing me. It. Um, do you guys need help with them, or you guys? Yes, we do. Them? Okay, fine. We're, we'll head the zonkeys back where we got them and right. uh, pay to stable them until we're ready to leave. Uh, there are six. Uh, I will take uh, five gold pieces a piece for a week. That includes food. Okay. If you're going to stay a week, it would be substantially less if you're only going to stay the night. Well, let's just do it for the night right now. How much is it for the night? Uh, it will be one and a, a one and a half gold pieces, so about one gold, fifteen silver for all six of them. Well, here's the thing, Lee. Uh, what what are we doing after this? I don't know what you're doing. I'm leaving this place. I'm not staying here. That's kind of that's kind of up to our friend the DM, isn't it? Yeah, it kind of is. Uh, I don't think that after gambling in this town for more than a night, I I think I'll be ready to go too. Uh, you'll be ready to go earn some money somewhere, I'm sure. I think I'm going to need to go earn some money. I better pay the my estate fee in advance. Yeah. Uh, right. I guess, uh, Is that one and a half for each dollar, zonkey? Total. So, all right, I'll, I'll pay it. All right. I'll ask one of the guards where is the closest place I could like trick out my zonkey. <laughs> I don't want to. You got the fancy albino zonkey, and now you want to trick him out? I think you yeah. should give it to Lee and let him have the yeah. You're the, you're the same guy that puts a fin on a Celica. Yeah, there there is a uh, aborigine uh, that can go ahead and trick out your ride uh, in the form of uh, Safe, magical hand sigil paint jobs on it. I just want to. I just want someone to take a brush and just paint stripes 
paint different colored stripes on it, and that's all I want. So you want to make it fruit? gum? <laughs> it's it's it go faster. Fruit stripe gum. Uh, paint the oh, orange stripes white. I'm so the sorry, it took me a minute. I forgot about that stupid horse they had on those commercials. Zebra gum, fruit stripe. Yeah. Uh, man fang, they just keep kind of looking at that nice scar of yours. <laughs> uh, can't help you, bud. Don't no. know. Robert and Haggis, are you going into the penguin or to the bar across the street? The one across the street, I think. That is Sally's. Uh, as you enter, you see a familiar face and a loud, boisterous, deep baritone voice calls out, my friends, my friends, I have heard you are heroes again. It is the caravan master that you met. <laughs> come, come sit, come sit. Uh, Haggis, uh, you recognize the young lady who was going to take you as her betrothed. Oh. It appears as though you have been replaced. Ooh. Her betrothed sits next to her in what can best be described as bondage gear. Mm. He's the gimp. <laughs> <laughs> he would be a gimp. If you don't know what it is, you're going to have to Google it. Please ask Just your parents before. Ask your dad. So. <laughs> your dad will explain it to you, honey. It's like Halloween. <laughs> For grown-ups. <laughs> uh, so you seem to have dodged a major league bullet as it appears as though uh, the betrothed is more slavish than lover. I guess you would say. Uh, the oh, caravan for free. The caravan master is excited to see you and has heard. Uh, news travels fast, my friends. You have come here. You have succeeded. You are on your way to becoming heroes. Tell me, how does it feel? Uh, it, it feels pretty good. I mean, winning's good. I like it. No, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> Uh, I like Eight first, you're last. be number one. I like being number one. I love that movie. <laughs> Robert Bobby, come on, Robert Bobby. <laughs> and break. Uh, so uh, he goes. So you have chosen this one. Ah. Uh, are you ready for another adventure? We are always ready for another adventure. Yeah. Where are your friends? Well, some were at the stable, and some were filling people full of lies and bullshit. <laughs> Us, we were always on the lookout for trouble and vengeance, revenge, mercy, killing. You know, good stuff, being good people. Looking for adventure. I think I have a job for you. Ooh. And we will take that up next week. <laughs> uh, let's do a little final thoughts on how this scenario played out. Felix, what'd you think? I liked it. I thought it turned out pretty good. I got myself an orange and white zonkey. Yes. <laughs> and a uh, I don't know if I realize it yet, if Felix knows it, but I still have those loaded dice in my pocket and I am itching to use them. And uh, is it Copious that has the cards or Haggis that has the cards? Haggis. Haggis, uh, what'd you think? I enjoyed it. Are we sure it's the real Haggis? No, you are not. Stop <laughs> your check. It's the witch. <laughs> <laughs> You killed Haggis and burned his body. <laughs> and we double tapped him. <laughs> He's dead, dead. Opius is a verbitterman. What do you think? <laughs> I, uh, we're the legend of Copius Volbitters the third. The dynasty begins. Oh, everybody yeah, else. That's just... what your name is. <laughs> <laughs> but that. Robert's just jealous uh, that I have a press agent. He still doesn't. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> you, are, you are definitely out there in the advertising world. Uh, you are Instagram, Facebook, Twitch, and I don't know, TikTok. Uh, you, are, right. you are hitting on all thrusters while Robert 
wallows in self pity and truth. <laughs> I am the backpack gnome dancing away. Ah, uh, man, Fang. Uh, aside from the hideous scar and loss of a charisma point, what'd you think? I thought it was pretty fun for the thirty minutes I was here. I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> well, you lived, you know. <laughs> Heat stroke is no joke. <laughs> when you start what walking happened? into walls, you'll realize that. What happened while I while I was gone? Uh, you hit oh, several have- rocks because you rolled a three, a six, a one, and a 19, uh, while your associate, uh, Weave, rolled a nine and a 12. Copius himself rolled a four and a 14. So you two took hits. Uh, Weave uh, must have had his mouth open treading water because he managed to steer clear of the rocks, although he did feel your hand, not realizing you were trying to pull him down and drown him as you feared for your own safety. He mistook it as a a cry for saving him because your deception roll was high enough. Uh, Robert Zeppelin, what'd you think? Uh, I think if I don't meet up with Weave along the way, I'll be very disappointed. Uh, If I don't have his skull mounted to my codpiece. You know what? I think you guys are going to run into Weave again. I so hope he makes the game fun, I tell you. Yes, yes he does. Uh, <laughs> last but not least, Leaf the Druid slash Anti-Druid. What do you think? Uh, I loved it. I like it. The, the, the way it flowed was really good. And, uh, you know, the battles went fairly well, I think. And I never fumbled once. That's true. Uh but you know what? Felix had an episode where uh, he hit everything. Everybody, you mean. That he, he hit fired. Everybody. He never missed anything. I he yeah, fired. didn't miss a single shot. That's true. Uh, folks, uh, let's see uh, what the mysterious caravan master has for him next week as they have to make a decision on a few different potential job opportunities. Some old some new uh but until then uh let's wave goodbye and uh tell everybody to wash their hands and have a safe weekend thanks everybody Bye. 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 Bye.